we will discuss about the differentiation of the red blood cells regulation of the red blood cells production maturation of the red blood cells and maturation failure in my previous lecture we have discussed that how various types of blood cells are formed from the single hematopoietic stem cell mean from the single pluripotent hematopoietic stem cell these stem cells are present in the red bone marrow now we will discuss that one of its committed stem cell mean colony forming unit erythrocyte will give rise to red blood cell so there are the following six stages through which colony forming unit erythrocyte passes and will give rise to red blood cell okay so now we will discuss each stage one by one number one proerythroblast number two basophil erythroblast number three polychromophil erythroblast number four arthrochromatic erythroblast number five reticulocyte and number six uh, erythrocyte mean red blood cells so one thing more we use the term blast for those cells which are immature so all these cells are immature okay so proerythroblast is the first cell which is formed from this committed stem cell mean colony forming unit erythrocyte then this proerythroblast will differentiate into basophil erythroblast we called uh this cell basophil because they stand with the basic dyes they stand with the basic dye okay. small amount of small amount of hemoglobin start to accumulate in the basophil erythroblast cell okay now this basophil erythroblast will differentiate into polychromatophil erythroblast okay during this stage the size of the nucleus become uh, less okay so the nucleus uh, nucleus become smaller and this polychromatophil erythroblast will differentiate into arthrochromatic erythroblast in this stage nu nucleus shrunk and darken okay and pink Uh, pink color of the cytoplasm due to the presence of the hemoglobin and the concentration of hemoglobin is near uh, near about thirty four percent. Okay, when this shrink nucleus is reabsorbed or excreted, then it will give rise to reticulocyte. In reticulocyte, no nucleus is present, and this reticulocyte gives bluish hue due to the presence of ribosomes and uh, mitochondria and also golgi apparatus mitochondria golgi apparatus okay and now this reticulocyte will give rise to erythrocyte in erythrocyte there is a complete absence of all the cellular organelles and this erythrocyte will give rise to red color due to the presence of iron okay this will give rise to red color due to the presence of iron so these are the following six stages through which this committed stem cell mean colony forming unit erythrocyte will differentiate will differentiate into mature red blood cells now we will discuss the regulation of the red blood cells production so the regulation of the red blood cell production is controlled through two mechanism number 1 tissue oxygenation and number 2 erythropoietin hormone so this is very simple tissue oxygenation mean when our tissue when our tissues receive low oxygen then they will uh, enhance the red blood cells production ओके मीन जब हमारे टिश्यूज जो हैं उनमें ऑक्सीजन की सप्लाई कम होती है तो ये ऑटोमेटिकली रेड ब्लड सेल्स की प्रोडक्शन को जो है इनक्रीज कर देते हैं ठीक है इसके अलावा जो दूसरा मैकेनिज्म है रिथ्रोपोटिन हार्मोन दिस हार्मोन विल सिक्रीटेड फ्रॉम द किडनीज डूरिंग अ कंडीशन नाउन एज हेपोक्सिया 
a foxia this is a condition in which we have low blood oxygen okay low level of the oxygen in the blood in this condition it will uh stimulate for the more production of the erythropoietin hormone and this hormone will ultimately act on the hematopoietic stem cell to uh, produce more pro erythroblast to produce more pro erythroblast and these pro uh, these uh, pro erythroblast will automatically give rise to more red blood cells okay so these are the two mechanism which regulate the production of the red blood cells number 1 tissue oxygenation and number 2 erythropoietin hormone number 3 maturation of the red blood cells maturation of the red blood cells occur by these two vitamins vitamin b12 and folic acid so vitamin b12 and folic acid are necessary for the production of thymidine and triphosphate both these are the essential component of the dna okay number 4 maturation failure so maturation failure occur during pernicious anemia during this uh, uh, disease atrophic gastric mucosa abnormality occur during this abnormality our parietal cells do not secrete the in intrinsic factor this intrinsic factor is necessary for the successful absorption of the vitamin b12 from our small intestine because this intrinsic factor will binds with the vitamin b12 and uh, protect it from the uh, digestion will bind this uh, intrinsic factor will bind with vitamin b12 and will protect it from the digestion okay along with the intrinsic factor vitamin b12 is successfully absorbed through our small intestine small intestine okay and will store in the liver okay uh, so the daily absorption of the uh, daily need of the vitamin vitamin b12 is 1 to 3 micro gram okay so it is the daily need of the vitamin b12 and uh, uh maturation failure also occurred uh, during cooking um, uh, mean folic acid is present in green vegetables green vegetables fruits and also in meat so during the cooking folic acid can easily be destroyed okay therefore it uh, folic acid will not be available uh, for the absorption in the small intestine and therefore maturation failure occur and also uh, due to gat absorption abnormalities sometime due to abnormalities in the gat absorption folic acid also uh, don't absorb from the small intestine therefore maturation failure occur uh, of the red blood cells okay so these are the following four points differentiation of the red blood cells regulation of the red blood cell production maturation of the red blood cells and maturation failure of the red blood cells